All right, let's hope that this thing works. I am um, gonna try to talk a little bit about uh, I pupil versus exit pupil. I'm in a uh, uh, hotel uh, in Israel, so rather than point the camera on me, I'm trying to do a screen capture with voiceover. Uh, let's hope this works. That's the first time I am experimenting with something like this. And my internet died. How interesting. No, nevertheless. So what I've got here, and you should be seeing this, is a picture swiped off of the internet uh, of a human eye. And the way um, uh, the way we think of a human eye is we think of an, that an eye is basically a camera. Well. A human eye is not a camera. Absolutely not. We know how a camera works. We do not have a really good idea of how human vision works. The eye, we do know how it works, right? So the eye kind of looks like a camera. There is a lens. I wonder why I can see this so well. I'm going to try this. There is a lens, right? And then uh, uh, there is the image sensor, which is basically the retina. It's uh, you know back here. There's a blind spot, etc. Uh, the lens uh, focuses the light onto the retina. We read it out, and we get an image. So far, so good. We know how this works. What we don't know is what happens afterwards. Because uh, the portion of a human brain that's responsible for interpreting the image it gets from the eye is so uh, freaking sophisticated that we have no idea how it works. We study this, we try to figure it out. Mm, not so simple. Not so simple does not begin to describe it. You know, when you look out and you see an object, like I'm in a hotel right now, there is a wall and there is a lamp. We do not have a particularly good idea of how our brain can figure out where the wall is and where the lamp is so quickly. We just don't. What, uh, what that means is that we really, all we know is we kind of observe the general, uh, we kind of observe the general behavior of how human vision works and make conclusions. Frequently without knowing especially well uh, what's happening in terms of with the specific question well um, the question on sniper's height was a gentleman said well I'm getting older I went to the doctor my uh, eye pupil doesn't get any more than four millimeters nowadays why do I need a scope with an exit pupil bigger than that Well, generally you want a scope with an exit pupil bigger uh, than your eye pupil to a significant uh, degree because you don't want your eye fixed. The way human vision works is not like we, take, you know, we just get an image from the eye and analyze that image. Your brain effectively takes at a bunch of snapshots that the eye delivers, compares them to each other, and figures all this stuff out. What that means is that, so if you've got it, this is an eyepiece of a rifle scope, and you've got, you know, that's an eye relief, somewhere here uh, is your eye, right? So this is a human eye. What you want to be able to do, you don't want your eye to be fixed in place, lined up to, uh, um, to the exit pupil rigidly. You want your eye to be able to move, to dither, to move up, down, left, right, and all that sort of stuff. And what that does is that it allows your brain to take multiple snapshots of the same image falling on different portions of your retina. Right, retina is this thing here. Okay, so if your eye is able to move up and down a little bit, the sometimes the image will be here, sometimes it will be here, sometimes it will be here. The density of the rods and cones and all that sort of stuff is different in different parts of the retina, so the image will look a little bit different. And your brain is really, really good in making comparative analysis, what it sees as your eye moves. And that way it can actually get more out of a scene 
than you, you can if with just one snapshot. In many ways, modern cell phones um, do something slightly similar. One of the ways, for example, Google has been able to extract so much performance out of a, a small camera and a cell phone is by taking multiple images, comparing them, making sense of them, uh, and do all sorts of stuff. Uh, do all sorts of stuff like that, right? So that's uh, one problem. Um, another thing that comes out of it, the way uh, human vision works, so we have very high resolution right in the center there, where there is the most, uh, the highest density of uh, you know, rods and cones and all that. However, human vision is pretty wide. And once you, you know, move further away from the center, the density of the light sensitive cells goes down. But they're still quite sensitive. Sometimes they're larger, so they're very sensitive to the low light kind of thing. And that is one of the one of the things you want to keep in mind is your eye does two things. There's vision and there is sensing. So what uh, parts of the retina that are a little bit further away from the center are doing is more like sensing. They sense motion, they sense things, they sense them very, very easily, and then your eye turns and uses the you know the center portion. Of the, uh, the center portion of the retina, where it has the most uh, uh, the most resolution, it uses that to kind of make sense of things. In many ways, that's how how uh, it's the same general idea we use for a lot of you know, missile warning systems and all sorts of things that try to find a threat coming in, which is really how our eyes evolve. We're we'll trying to figure out the threat coming in. If there is a freaking crocodile coming over to eat you, you better detect it early, figure out, confirm it as a dead crocodile, and tail it out of there right so defense from predators for the humans really depended on uh, uh, their vision humans have unusually good vision maybe birds of prey is better in terms of resolution but virtually all other animals have vision that's not as good as ours maybe there are exceptions that I'm not aware of but our vision is really good and uh, notice that I say our vision not our eyes our eyes are not that awesome but the vision is really really good because of how good the visual cortex portion of our brain is in making sense of the uh, in making sense of the images, right? So when you think of a human eye, there is something called the field of view and something called the field of regard. Field of view is what you know your eyes here, what you can see in one snapshot, right? So basically, uh, this right? so you maybe a field of view. Field of regard is how much uh, you can cover when the uh, you when you when your eye also rotates a little bit, right? When it goes up and down, when you look at something here, something here. Field of regard is a little bit wider. So what you want, you don't want your eye fixed in place to only see what's immediately in your field of view. You want your eye to be able to scan and move around a little bit because it will cover a wider field of regard. A wider area and uh, collect more information out of it right what you see in low light with let's say your eye pupils at four millimeters and uh, let's say you have an option of two different rifle scopes one will deliver four millimeter exit pupil to you another one a uh, six millimeter with all else being equal just probably a stretch but for the ex purpose of the experiment assume that your brain your visual cortex will be able to extract more out of the seven, uh, six millimeter exit pupil because your eye is able to move around in there. Your brain gets different images and gets information from different parts of retina. And that's so really, really, really quickly. We, you know, our, our visual system, eye and brain together, is able to uh, go through all this information really, really fast. All that processing to a significant degree is very seamless to you, right? And then uh, uh, you get the information. Some of it we're born with, some of this is a learned skill. You know, if you're a hunter uh, and you've ever gone, taken somebody with you who is younger than you are, technically has better vision, but you're an experienced hunter and you realize you will find game much faster than a person with you although that other person may have sharper eyes and ultimately better vision but because you know what you're looking for and you've been doing this for many years your brain has learned how to recognize certain things right so the ability of your brain to learn and adapt 
can frequently overcome generally sharper younger eyes. Right? Now, if those sharp young eyes also develop the same uh, uh, skills in terms of recognizing what you're looking to get done, then you're screwed. But uh, there is uh, more to it than just the eye as a camera, the processing, the ability to process information that your brain has is uh, quite remarkable and uh, as i said we do not we do not have a very good idea of how any of that uh, how any of that stuff works all right anyhow i'm gonna see if this bloody thing worked uh, if it does i'll upload it on youtube if you have any questions you know how to find me ask uh, in, the com in the comments in the youtube video or um, on my website or on the forums so i'm not Difficult to find, look for Dark Lord of Optics, and uh, I'll pop up like Beetlejuice. Thank you for listening and watching, and uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask.